My name is Shauna Camilleri, and I'm with my husband, Mike Camilleri, and we have our daughter, Kyle, who is 14 months, and we have twin boys who are just a little bit more than three months. They are Cashton and Carson, and we have one son in heaven, Keenan. He was born uh, January of 2016. And um, we had had some issues before his birth uh, with some other pregnancies that didn't work out. So when Keenan, you know, went full term, we were absolutely ecstatic. And uh, he was everything we hoped for. And um, you know, very early on was, you know, as normal in infancy as you would expect. Uh, there were no outward signs of any uh, real issues of any kind uh, at the very earliest stages. Uh, there were no physical signs. Yeah, I think it was at the four month um, checkup and being a first time mom at the time I did not know that you know he should have been following objects at that point so that's where things started and um, then we went to an ophthalmologist and then a neurologist and um, just started there and uh, we went for a 45 minute uh, EEG and sure enough, it showed that he was having uh, seizure activity. Um, and we went for more tests and tests and doctors. And then we went, uh, we started on some epilep uh, epilepsy meds. And they just were not getting the seizures under control. And we did genetic testing. We were in and out of uh, majority of all the south southeast Florida hospitals, and um, the genetic testing at nine months, I believe it was, came back inconclusive. Um, however, he was at the time still not reaching milestones, and they decided to run more genetic testing this time on Mike and I. And uh, that's when we found out that he, Mike and I are rare, are carriers of a rare genetic mutation. And therefore, Keenan had a one in four chance of uh, getting this diagnosis, which was called microcephaly capillary malformation syndrome. And he was approximately 13th in the world. And at the helm was epilepsies that were uncontrollable. Chips away at you because, you know, I mean, uh, you, you think, okay, there's now a 50% chance he's going to walk. And that's a lot to absorb. And then it just, one thing after another, then it was his vision. And then we were one day actually, long before we found out the diagnosis, devastated thinking, oh my gosh, he's, he, he's never gonna be able to drive? And those things that are so insignificant. I mean, we actually had a discussion about, well, maybe by the time he's 16, they'll have, you know, cars that can, I don't know, drive themselves or something. And, and then it just keeps knocking you down the more you hear. And uh, when we got the diagnosis, I don't think I truly understood until the um, geneticist literally said, it's terminal. It's just a lot to absorb. And like Mike said, you have hope. You think, well, 
maybe he's going to, you know, he's going to beat those odds. And in, in a way, he did by nine months. He lived past, you know, the two-year life expectancy. So I take that, those extra nine months as a gift, um, knowing he, he fought. When we first found out, uh, we did a lot of research, or tried to, but it's so, so rare. rare. I mean, literally the 13th case in the world. Uh, there was one kind of seminal paper on it that was like, at the time, see, it was 2011, the paper was written. Uh, and there's been no research since. So we were flying blind. And to some extent, ever the optimist, I looked at it and said, well, they really don't know. So why should we accept this? Uh, and um, that's how we kind of, at least it, I guess to some extent it kept me going. 